parents moved from Egypt to Switzerland before I was born. Back then, Egypt was a place of its own kind. The scent of freshly baked bread floating in the streets and Mukal Zoom on the radio, there was some kind of magic in the air. I still remember when I was going there in the summer holidays. My parents would take me to the pyramids or I'd meet all of my cousins in the countryside. And we'd go on for days, playing around the fields, chasing goats and being chased by the neighbor's dogs. My uncles would tell us no cats, the typical Egyptian jokes, or teach us some magic tricks. And before going to bed, my mother would read me tales of the Arabian Nights. While things certainly weren't as perfect for real as they were in my kids' world, the situation was still much better than it is today. Despite what their kindness, warmth and positivity would make you believe, Egyptian people have been pushing through challenging times this past couple of decades. Their ever-beaming smiles hide a lot of worrying and many sleepless nights. In the last few decades, life has become increasingly harder for many Egyptian people. While the economy was going down, they faced a very hard inflation. Prices of most goods skyrocketed, but the salaries didn't keep up. Today, many families can barely afford to put food on the table. We all have ups and downs, that's just how life is. But the important thing is to never miss a chance to help when you're standing on the sunny side. We really wanted to do something, no matter how big or small our contribution would be. So we got down to work. We tried to think about how to improve people's lives there, even a little bit. One day, we learned about hydroponic farming, and that's when it clicked. Hydroponic farming is a special way of growing plants that can be easily adapted for urban environments. Cairo happens to have a ton of empty and flat rooftops on which we could install a hydroponic system. Next challenge, find a partner who could help us on the technical side. It didn't take a lot of research to find Shadoof, an absolute reference in that field. It's a simple business model. With the help of donations and microloans, residents can purchase a small flat pack farm. We reached out to them and they immediately jumped in to help us. And using recycled water and mineral solutions, communities can grow cheaper, healthier produce. One last thing was missing to make this whole project possible. Funding. And for that, we need to introduce you to a very special organization, Le Prix Pralon. Every year, it funds social projects submitted by students. The goal is to support young people in doing good while discovering new places, meeting people, and learning their culture. Countries all around the world have seen projects come to life thanks to their support, and now Egypt was about to join the list. So we just arrived in Egypt. My daddy came to pick us up, and we're going back home right now. Uh, tomorrow we're waking up super early, and we're gonna start working on the rooftops. Before we knew it, we were sitting in a car, driving through the thick traffic of Cairo, on our way to Shalouf's offices. Right now we're going to meet the team that's going to help us with the rooftop farming. There, we first met Shireen, our main contact who had done a wonderful job at coordinating the project. After a warm welcome, she took us to their testing lab. Yes, you guessed it, their own rooftop. There, she showed us the hydroponic systems, and this is how it works. Water is mixed with a nutrient solution in a bucket below the structure. The mixture is then pumped up the structure and in the pipes containing the plants. As the pipes are tilted, the water flows down the row of plants, watering all the roots and then flows back into the bucket before being pumped up again. Here's lettuce and over there it's uh, kale. Okay. And both are winter cups. Now it was time to move on as there was a rooftop waiting to be greened up. Just arrived in the building. The building we were about to install the units on is home to five families. The people who live uh, in this building were very, very happy to hear about the units and they basically cleaned up the whole, the whole rooftop was like that and they cleaned up the whole thing. We would install five hydroponic units. These would provide about 800 pesticide free plants to harvest every two weeks that would be shared between all families in the building. نحن هنا في مصر بيبنوا مباني على الأراضي الزراعية فالأراضي الزراعية بدأت تظهر فالمشروع ده هيبقى أوفر بكتير 
قوي 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 عن الاراضي الزراعيه واوفر في التربه والزرع هيبقى صحي This place came with a few challenges as there was no electricity and no access to water on the rooftop we had to get this done وانا دلوقتي بعمل لهم مواصلات الكهرباء وهو في اوله صعب بس بعد كده هيبقى هم هيحبوه اكتر هم حابينه دلوقتي بس فيما بعد هيحبوه اكتر لما لما يشوفوا الثمره و ويشوفوا الانتاج والحاجات دي. We need water on the rooftop and he needs to connect the pipes but he needs to connect them from outside of the building, you know? Not from the inside because it's not accessible but from the outside. So he basically needs to climb and uh, this is tied to the stairs. هينزل دلوقتي؟ يديسو. So the guy is gonna wear this and he's going to climb the building to bring water up Upstairs. Man, that's insane. So he's just saying that don't let any kid or anyone touch the rope. Man, the guy is hanging out there. So we're almost done with the building and we're just gonna grab something to eat. It's gonna be like typical Egyptian style. When we were done putting up the units, it was time for seating. Many other pairs of hands joined us to help as the day went by, replicating the techniques shown by Sharouf's agro-engineer, Soela. بتستخدم بيئة أو صوت زراعية خفيفة جدا البرلايت والبيتموس وحتى الصوف الصخري أو الحاجات كلها بتبقى وسائط للتربة خفيفة جدا مش نفس خالص ثقل الطين والطمي ممكن يستخدمه في الأرض. Now we are just putting this into the water and this uh, spongy fabric will actually soak up the water and bring it to the plant which will then be able to um, to basically get all the nutrients and minerals that it needs. So we have uh, 210 pots per unit, which makes 840 pots altogether. Everything was set up, but we were not done quite yet. The families still needed to be trained by Soela. Shadouf's team had even prepared a final exam to make sure everyone had followed and understood how to take care of the plants properly. While the sun was setting on the never-ending city, we slowly started wrapping up the day. After a few adjustments, and of course the group picture, it was time to say goodnight. After a few days, we came back with Shadouf to make some adjustments to the system and make sure everything was going well. The crops are still tiny because we planted the seeds and not the sprouts. And this here, what you can see is, uh, it's gonna get much bigger, but this is, they call this Malochea, or Rami will say it in the video later. But this is basically a very, very common, like popular um, plant here that they make a dish out of. It's kind of a soup. Uh, the plant kind of looks like spinach, but it's not spinach. Uh, it actually tastes much better. Everybody worked on it. The kids, the teenagers, the like, adults, everybody was invested in the project. So we have a pretty good deal. Um, there are some adjustments that need to be made because, uh, I mean, that's a whole system. So not everything should be done by hand. And some of the things that require the system to work need some adjustments to the actual unit. So that's what we are doing right now. But, and hopefully the, the yields are going to be even better. 
everything seems to be going pretty well uh, and we're just taking it up a notch. As our return flight to Switzerland was approaching, we dropped by for a final visit. It is hard to find the words to describe the energy and joy that were filling the atmosphere. أكيد 100% هيحتاجوا يعملوا زيه لأن هو مثمر ومنتج ومش مكلف. Learning, meeting new people, and seeing a project come to life, that's the perfect cocktail to pump you up again. And maybe magic is not about a place or time. Maybe magic is everywhere that you ignite it, through your actions and intentions. Maybe there is a spark of it in every shared moment. And if so, then we shouldn't be afraid of giving a little bit of our time for helping others. And you don't have to change your life to make it worth the effort. Because every little thing you do for those around you will make your life and theirs a little brighter, a little warmer, a little fuller, and a lot more beautiful. Ninety-five percent of the large-scale project is being financed by a Swiss foundation. Shadouf buys any surplus produce and sells it in Egyptian capital with the help of other local NGOs.